Joy. 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 It's that good. We're just going to repeat it. <laughs> See, we, you asked for joy and you got it. Everyone's laughing and smiling. It's great. I can see it through all your masks. It's wonderful. So there you go. See, we deliver. We want to welcome our visitors and our guests uh, who are worshiping today, both in person and online. It's great to have you here. Um, does everyone who's in person have a bulletin? And um, I'll explain uh, communion real, real quick here in, in a short bit. But um, if you would like, we send out a weekly email that has all the events and different things that are taking place. You can um, send us an email, office at stephenlc.org, or call the church office, 717-766-2168. We'll make sure that you receive that. We want to thank our many worship assistants who make worship possible. Uh, today we have uh, Bill and Tom on our AV team. Mike is our Zoom host. Carol is our lector and assisting minister. Beth is our cantor. Abby, our organist. Laura, our usher. Sue provided Alter Guild. And Nicole is our Facebook host. And we thank them one and all for their help. As usual, for those of you who are online, you can put prayers in the chat section, and we'll make sure to add those into the prayers of the congregation. Communion, how this works, there's uh, three different ways. If you're online, we invite you to provide your own elements of bread and either wine or grape juice. If you're in person, you've got two different options. One is at the appropriate time, you can, um, at the uh, invitation of the usher to come forward up to the front, I will uh, give you a wafer and then also uh, the cup. You'll intake it in the, into the cup and then step off to the side, pull your mask off, and then um, uh, consume the elements. Or if you would prefer to take communion at your seat, there are uh, communion packets over on the side. If anybody wanted one, does anybody, if anybody needs one, you can feel free to go up and get that at any, any point, but two different options for communion. All right, let us uh, turn to page one and read our mission together. The mission is what guides what we do and how we live out our faith. So let us read that together. We respond to Christ's love by feeding those who hunger in body, mind, and spirit. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we hear our prelude.
please rise as you're able. Blessed Holy Trinity, blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who alone does wonders, who lifts up the lowly, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the mercy of our God. God, for whom we wait in the presence of one another, we confess our sin before you. We fail in believing that your good news is for us. We falter in our call to tend your creation. We find our sense of self in material wealth. We fear those different from ourselves. We forget that we are your children and turn away from your love. Forgive us, blessed one, and assure us again of your saving grace. Amen. God in Christ Jesus has looked with favor upon you. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, your sins are forgiven. You are children of the Most High, inheritors of the eternal promise and recipients of divine mercy. God strengthens you anew to follow the way of peace. Amen. And as I have been saying throughout Advent, that if the church has ever caused you pain or suffering, then that is not right, and that it's my hope and the church's hope that the church can be a place of healing. Those in the sanctuary may be seated as we hear our gathering music, Joy to the World. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope which comes in Christ. And we lit the candle of peace, remembering God's dream of a peaceful world. Today, we light the third candle of Advent, the candle of joy. In Advent, we are in a time of waiting, like the Israelites who wandered through the wilderness, waiting to come into the promised land. We wait for the coming of the joy of ages. We wait the day where we can join our voices with the angels to sing joy to the world, the Lord is come. We wait for the day when everlasting joy will be on each of us. We light this candle in joy. one candle 
to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall bring salvation to Israel. God fulfills the promise. Light two candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd, gently lead them homeward. Light three candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light banish darkness. Lift your heads and lift high the gateway for the King of Glory. In peace, let us pray to the Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the preaching of John, that rejoicing in your salvation, we may bring forth the fruits of repentance through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Those in the congregation may be seated as we hear our readings. The first lesson 
is from the prophet Zephaniah, the third chapter. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day, it shall be said to Jerusalem, do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord, your God, is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might and has become my salvation. The second lesson is a reading from Paul's epistle to the Philippians, the fourth chapter. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made to God be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers who warned you to flee from the wrath to come. Bear fruits worthy of repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. 
Even now the axe is laying at the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what then should we do? In reply, he said to them, whoever has two coats must share with anyone who has none. And whoever has food must do likewise. Even tax collectors came to be baptized and they asked him, teacher, what should we do? He said to them, collect no more than the amount prescribed for you. Soldiers also asked him, and we, what should we do? He said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation and be satisfied with your wages. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water. But one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So I saw a conversation that was written by Kelly Tripsuk, who is a local writer and spiritual director. And uh, I asked her if I could use a piece of it. She is very creative. And so she wrote a conversation with John the Baptist. And I'm just going to give you a little snippet of it. So here she starts off, Dear John, what did you go out to see? in relation to John being out in the wilderness. John answered her, I went out to see the end of things, to see the death wrought by drought, to witness the unconfined sky. I went out to feel my skin burnt by the sun, to shiver, to shiver through the night. I went out to see the end of things because nothing is ever allowed to end in the royal places, in the synagogues, where death already raises its stench. I went out to shake off the numbness of perpetual life. I went out to know death so that I might recognize life when it comes, to know darkness that I might recognize light. Kelly responds and says, what else, dear John, please tell. What else did you go out to see? John responded, I went out to see something new because nothing new can ever break forth in the old space as old spaces of power and control. I went out to know someone more, someone more than the small and spiteful God conjured by the closed and fearful readings of the ancient texts. Is that all? Is there anything more? What, dear John, did you go out to see? I went out to breathe, to inhale freely beyond the cloistered, incense-laden temple air. I went out to see the ones who were already there, the ones who have always been there, not just Elijah and Isaiah and Miriam, but the ones whose names no one wrote down. I went out to see the women, the pagan, those deemed unwhole and unholy. I went out to see their wounds, to hear their stories. I went out to weep with those who weep and to speak good news to them and all who find their way out beyond the known edge of things to tell them this ending is itself a new beginning. Is there anything more that we should know? Is there anything more you want to say, John? Just this, in my going out, I was making a way, and he too came out to me. Why do we go to a wilderness? That's where John was, and that's where the people went out to, was the wilderness. You can't take a whole lot of things with you into the wilderness. Everything we carry becomes a burden. You don't really need much in the wilderness. All our identities that we carry with us are worthless in the wilderness. We hear John say that pretty bluntly when he says, do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our ancestor, something that would have been really important 
to the people going out to John, their heritage. John says there's an ax laying at the root, ready to cut that off. What are the identities that we cling to that we think will get us something because of them? Our heritage, our ideologies, our language, maybe our political party affiliations, our nationality, our wealth, the identities are numerous. They're all worthless in the wilderness. They don't offer any type of leg up in the wilderness. It's best to just drop them and leave them behind. They won't feed us in the wilderness. It's God who we need. It's God who provides for us in the wilderness. So why do we go into the wilderness? We, like the crowds who sought out John, go for a reason, or maybe many reasons, often very personal. Maybe we feel stuck. Maybe we're there because we're broken, and we want to find out if there's another way beyond the way that we have been doing things, beyond the way that society operates, ways that are broken and that are unhealthy and possibly unjust. Maybe we have a desire to live more faithfully. Why do we go into the wilderness? Maybe because the noise of everything around us, of respectable society, is just too consuming and too noisy for us to hear Jesus and the good news. The 24-hour, never-ending news cycle full of fear, anger, destruction, grievance, power plays, corruption, and bad news. Maybe it's just too much. We want to get away from it. We need to for our own sanity. It's not surprising that there's a crowd seeking out John in the wilderness. So many people are lost. I think the same is true today. So many people are lost. They're searching. And a lot of people will just find, follow anyone with all of the answers, as long as they sound certain. Certainty is what so many people think they need when they're lost. If someone with the answers can tell us what our identity is and who our enemy is, then we'll all be all right. If that person can appeal to our fears and make it sound like they have the answers and can fix everything, great. In other words, people who are lost will always seek out a savior, regardless of who it is. Being lost is no fun. Maybe you were lost as a child, if you remember wandering around a store, calling out to your mom. It's no fun. Like the wilderness, it's uncomfortable. Seeking certainty, knowing as if that will give us what we think we need, more control over our lives. And that really hasn't worked out well. We can control ourselves right into the grave. The good news isn't about being in control of our lives or those around us. It's not about knowing the answers. It's not about our identities, as if any of those things offer salvation to us or will fix us or will give us what we think we need. Good news is an extension of what God has always been up to. Shalom. Wholeness. Completeness. Enough. What a radical concept. Enough. No need for more. Being satisfied with what is. Because when we think that one more additional thing will make us happy or complete, guess what? It won't. It never does. It's always lacking. It may seem like John is the crazy one out in the wilderness. He certainly dresses crazy and eats crazy foods and has this message, you brood of vipers. But maybe we're the crazy ones because we keep looking for completeness with more stuff, more experiences, more money, more knowing, more control. There will always be something else. There will always be another product. There will always be more money to be obtained. There will always be more more, more. 
when we get past John's initial statement that catches our attention, the question is asked by the crowd, what should we do? John got their attention. Certainly get people's attention when you call them a brood of vipers. Okay, now what, John? The answer is not all that radical. He goes from you brood of vipers to, well, if you got some extra things, give them to somebody in need. You got an extra coat? Give it to somebody in need. You got extra food? Give it to somebody in need. Collect what you're supposed to. Don't extort people and be satisfied with what you make. These are not radical things. It's about seeing the image of God, the same image that you and I have, and responding when we see the image of God in someone else. In other words, you have enough. Be satisfied with what you have and give to those in need however that looks. Move towards completeness and wholeness. It's about moving towards shalom. It always has been. Wholeness and completeness and enough. About not seeking more. If we need more, then we are disconnected from God. If we need more, then God's creation is enough is not enough. God's kingdom is not enough. And that's what empires do. They're never satisfied, regardless of what kind of empire that we're talking about. They always seek out more, and they'll do whatever they can to obtain more. But we're not empires. We weren't designed to be. We're designed to be children of God, made in the image of God, moving towards shalom. Joy comes in being content with what you have. A phrase that I saw this week was, when you love what you have, you have everything you need. What a countercultural message it is in opposition to consumer Christmas and what that sells us. Advent tells us to slow down and to wait. Advent tells us the only thing we need, the only gift we need is Jesus. John tells us to share what we have with those in need, to be content with what we have. Secular Christmas tells us that happiness only comes in buying more stuff. How in the world did Christmas, of all things, turn into that? As we go out and about in our wildernesses of shopping, unending cycle of news, doom-scrolling, listening to rhetoric, seeking more and more and more. John is out there waiting in the wilderness, waiting for us to come, to hear the good news, maybe to be shocked into it, maybe to be told that we're part of the brood of vipers so we can get our attention, to tell us the truth, to clear away the garbage that clutters us and weighs us down. You don't need it in the wilderness. And to remind us of the simplicity and the wholeness and enoughness of the gospel and to prepare the way and point to Jesus. Our presiding bishop, Elizabeth Eaton, recently made this statement. Let's be gentle with ourselves and each other this Advent and Christmas. Let's not fret about imperfect lives and incomplete holiday preparations. We won't ever get it completely right. That's God's work. It's the best gift exchange ever. Thanks be to God. We'll continue by hearing our hymn of the day.
Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. Holy God, Renew your church and raise up leaders who announce your good news. Grant peace to congregations and seminarians in the midst of transition. Guide the work of candidacy and call committees. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Creating God, your spirit brought forth the earth and all that is in it. Breathe life into us that we are inspired to live in harmony with one another and the planet. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Shepherding God, you lead your people in paths of righteousness. Raise up prophets in our own day who warn against captivity to greed and point us to the freedom found in generosity. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Nurturing God, you come near in times of worry and need. Cradle us in your arms that we trust you and are not afraid. Attend to any who are hungry, imprisoned, or ill this day. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Me. Rejoicing God, you exalt over us in singing. Enliven the song of our assembly and bless the ministry of church musicians. With instruments and dance, join our voices to the song of all creation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give you thanks for your servants who showed us your goodness and grace. By the power of your spirit, keep us steadfast in faith until we make our home with you. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, mercy is great. I invite those in the sanctuary to offer any additional prayers at this time. In addition, we offer prayers for Heather Bowers, a single mom, for strength and help through this holiday season. Prayers for Art Grove's sister, Sandra Fabian, who just entered assisted living and is adjusting to her new environment. Prayers for strength and comfort for all those caring for hospitalized COVID patients as the pandemic continues. Prayers for strength, comfort, and healing for all those affected by tornadoes. Move us to do what we can to provide help and assistance. Continue prayers for Joan Weist as she recovers. 
in the letter to the Philippians, we're told, do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Today, we pray that people may be set free from the destructive bondage of racism, white supremacy, and nationalism. We hear God speak through the prophet Zephaniah, saying, I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach from it. Today, we pray that you would remove the disaster of violence in our society. We pray for the families of those who have died due to gun violence, the five people who were killed, and the 26 people who were injured since last Sunday. We lift up the following communities who are dealing with the trauma of violence this week. El Paso, Texas, Detroit, Michigan, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Capitol Heights, Maryland, Deloitte, Wisconsin, Charlotte, North Carolina, and Lansing, Michigan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Let us show a sign of peace from where we are and we invite those online to turn your camera on so we can share the peace with you. The instructions for the offering are in the bulletin. We thank you for your generosity that allow us to do the many different ministries that go on through this congregation. For those of you who are online, we invite you to set your table with wine and either grape juice or, um, yeah, wine or grape juice and some bread. Those in person, if you are receiving at your seat, you're invited to open up your communion packet to make it a little bit easier for you. And I will also have, for anyone that needs it, um, gluten-free wafers. Let us pray. God of our waiting and watching, we offer the gifts of our hearts and our lives to the service of all your people. Prepare the way before us as we meet you in this simple meal through Christ Jesus, our pathway and our peace. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. one, the beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. I invite those of you who are either receiving at home or in your pews to please hold up your element of bread. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, I invite you to hold up your cup. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us, awaken your people, and fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to Christ's banquet. Feast on God's gift of grace. body and blood of our Lord, broken and shed for you. You may be seated.
please rise as you're able. Let us pray. Most high God, you have come among us at this table. By the Spirit's power, form us to be bearers of your word, sharing gifts of mercy and grace with all through Jesus Christ, our host and our guest. Amen. The God of hope, fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus for whom we wait. Amen. You may be seated as we hear our sending him, he came down. Please rise as you're able. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 